Once again, here is me, Pat Windrow, at the Cable Easel with a program which is painting from life. Uh, landscapes most of the time, local ones particularly. And now that this is uh, Channel 1, uh, the landscapes are going to go farther and farther afield, farther east and farther west, and so on. Not, not just uh, uh, concentrating on uh, the few uh, townships that we had, but uh, going all the way out. And so, um, uh, when the spring comes, we will be traveling farther down to the uh, Montauk area. But now, uh, we're still sort of winter-bound here. And this is a scene which I began the last time. Part one was a study of a winter beach scene of a place that I have painted before. Uh, uh, an historic little building called the Gamecock. And it's at the end of Trustees Road in Stony Brook. And this is part two, which, which means that uh, the resolution of this composition is going to take place this time. And I hope that the explanations are going to be uh, not just simple enough, but interesting enough for you to maybe contemplate taking up some painting on your own with this device. Go out with a uh, video tape recorder and tape a scene for 30 or 40 minutes, and then bring it back and project it on your television. I guarantee it's going to be a better program than a lot of that you see, and you work from that. So that's the technique that we have, willing to share it with the world. And here I'm doing it um, uh, as a professional device. And so it is not just something that, um, uh, that will do for people who are kind of um, amateurs. Uh, this is a professional approach to this kind of thing. So I'm now going to do, I'm not now going to carry on with the painting of this scene and I'm painting the furthest away and coming towards the foreground. Here is the um, here is this little uh, spit of sand which is on the rise of this little promontory that goes out into the creek um, uh, that leaves Stony Brook Harbor and winds its way past uh, West Meadow Beach and this gamecock has been sitting on this little uh, this little spit of land since about 1880. Uh, so it's a little historic building and it's of course it's an artist's um, it's an artist's favorite. Uh, all, all people who come out here and decide to paint usually wind up sometime or another at the Gamecock. Uh, here is the color of the sand which I'm observing as I believe is, is pretty true and I'm using a rather heavy brush. Uh, for the uh, because I'm using quick drying paint and it is that's a very dense um, uh, uh, pigment and so it becomes um, extremely difficult to m manage with uh, sable brushes which tend to be uh, tend to collapse under the weight of heavy paint so I'm using this nice heavy brush and as a result of that uh, a very good heavy and painterly technique takes place a wonderful really oily look about it, an oil painting look about it takes place Place. And it's um, it's what uh, it's what everybody will, should aim for actually in the painting with oils. While I have this color on my brush, I'm going to just uh, indicate very slightly the trunks of these trees. They are cedar trunks. They are tend to be gray, somewhat colorless, but they must be there with maybe a little bit of color here and there. Sometimes there's a there's a stray uh, branch coming off the trunks, but uh, for the most part they are just sort of gray and really quite indistinct. As you can see, you can barely see them on, on, the, uh, on the monitor on the projected painting. So uh, you don't need very much. Uh, once in a while you may want to just introduce a little tiny bit of, of light on them because uh, sometimes the sun does catch them. The sun was, 
was not very cooperative the day that this was shot because it is, after all, winter time and the clouds gather and snow flurries are predicted and so on. So, so but, but you need to have some indication that there is something that those trees are hanging on to. I'm going to, <clears throat> while I'm at it, and I have a little bit of darkness on my brush, I'm just going to put in this pole. Uh, this pole is what um, tells you that human habitation takes place here, that you have the ability to have electricity. And the pole also gives a nice dimension. It also gives you a time in history. When this, um, when this little building was built, there was no need for this pole. It obviously has been added later. Uh, when this building was built, um, I believe that hurricane lamps are probably the only things that illuminated the inside. And the inside is quite charming and has a wonderful staircase with some notations written on the wooden walls about uh, weather conditions at that time and the race that was won and so forth. So it's a rather charming, a charming callback to another era. Uh, these little bushes in the background are not, they look like little bushes, but they're actually good sized cedar trees that have been growing there for a very, very long time. As I said on the other program, more than likely uh, were either seedlings or had already taken root when this Gamecock was built by Mr. Shipman. Um, I've given some form to that tree in the background. Probably shouldn't have. I'm really not fond of the idea. I think they were, it was much nicer when he was just uh, a, an amorphous and ghostly little uh, figure back there. So I'm going to scumble that. Scumble is a word that you do when you get rid of painting, when you, when you take away something that you've put in. It's called scumbling. Now, to get on with the, uh, I'm going to put the details on later because this is drying very nicely. And uh, putting the uh, little fancy, gingerbread on this building is going to be done uh, at the last moment. I'm going to clean off this brush and show you w with uh, as, ma as many masterful strokes as I can the application of the snow. I'm going to use a pure, uh, introduce a pure white um, a pigment onto this. This is uh, the snow appeared to be extremely white when the, when the sun was out and so you put it on nice and thick I believe it turns here, and the wind must have blown it into some in, into the beach um, underneath the trees there, and then it continues as just a sea of snow on this beach. Um, it's. Um, very exciting to go to the beach in the winter time because whatever you see in the summertime when you're all concerned with the um, with the greenery and everything the the starkness of of a winter scene at the beach has always interested me i i believe that you can see one right behind me on the wall here which is satorkat harbor with snow on the beach and then uh, there are a few others in my collection, but uh, beach scenes in the wintertime are absolutely... See, isn't that, isn't that a neat scene? I mean, really, Satorkot Harbor never looked as well until the, the ice hits it with the wonderful reflections and the shiny quality of the ice. So um, if you can possibly uh, um, set yourself up in your car, you don't have to take the video recorder out. You can go and sit in the car and do it. And it's, um, it's extremely rewarding. I find that pa painting snow scenes is, um, is one of the great fun things to do. The the snow has, has gone a little bit farther than this building and it's, and it's visible over there in the distance and, and it turns up this, turns this corner here and it also is right up against the phone pole. So we had a rather nice heavy snowfall and that's, um, that's the evidence of it. The next uh, little line of snow is going to come in after I put the beach grass in. Uh, over here, quite brilliantly lit, is a blue uh, is a as evidence of the um, of the blueness of the water, even though there is not much color in the sky. The blueness of the water in the winter time is always very astounding to me. And there is a there is water back here. It's called the creek, and you can see it. This this building is on is on a rise, and you can see the creek behind uh, and underneath the building. But that water has got to go in there, and it probably ought to be much more brilliant than that. So I'll just add a little bit more color, make it a nice brilliant blue underneath there, which I believe it is with the, with the right lighting. And um, uh, then the water in the foreground, you'll see, is going to also be nice and brilliant. So there is the, um, there is the, uh, the color of that creek, which enables me now to show you that underneath this building is being held up by a piling. Uh, there is a nice dark piling right, up on, right underneath here, which um, explains uh, the water being able to be seen underneath. And there's also some darkness underneath here because the uh, building is casting its own shadow. It is elevated somewhat from the, um, from the uh, beach 
uh, it because obviously because it needs to be uh, up on stilts a little bit because water does rise and so there is the gives that building an anchor you can see that there is uh, the, the the building is not floating in the air but it is actually anchored uh, by by denoting and here's a uh, here's a post in the front here which um, may or may not have some actual um, uh, practical purpose, but it is nevertheless there. I've got some black on my brush, so, so, so I better not make it black because I don't believe that black is uh, is a good color to work with. It's a, a nice, good dark gray. The top of this little cupola here is not my favorite part of the building. I think that they, I think that they kind of uh, use some liberties about the top of this. As I remember this little cupola a long time ago. It didn't look like that at all. It had a different shape to it, and it was, in my opinion, much more charming. But I'm not going to argue. They they saved the building. The building will not die, so it's okay. I better not be too too picky about it. Here is the here is the whiteness of the uh, of that little cupola that's on top of this. I'm going to make it quite thick because I want the white to really show, and. Um, then there's a center there's a, a center window in there which I do not believe is that shape at all in, in the original but um, you know how how many times can you complain about something uh, I'm I'm all, I'm just a painter and I just remember what I see and if actually if they had come to me and said what do you remember about that cupola I would have told them it certainly doesn't look like that but it's okay it's still a charming piece and I'm kind of going to put the 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 white um, well they were probably they were probably lightning they had lightning rods on the ends of them they are now merely wooden uh, pointy sticks on the end uh, the the original one that I remember had iron lightning rods on the top little gray uh, balls of uh, of iron or, or whatever it is that conducts electricity down on the end of these things they, they're not there now they have eliminated them I don't know why there then there is also the um, there is also the little uh, rococo uh, Victorian balcony that sticks out uh, here. Uh, this is original, and this is quite quite faithfully re redone. And as you can see, the painting, uh, the paint underneath it is is um, is now dry enough for it to be able to take an overlay for this balcony. Uh, the balcony is, uh, as I remember it, has got it goes back here, and then there are little cross pieces, so it can be just very very loosely interpreted for that balcony. And I think there's another one on the other side, except that it's got a little roof over it. Uh, that was that was for when they brought the boats in. They could have the um, they could have a winch to pull the boats out of the creek. Uh, but this is being supported with a um, with a white with a white uh, brace. Uh, here uh, is the um, is this little um, well. It's, I'm going to interpret it extremely loosely. I'm not going to make the details that that it is. It doesn't need to. All it needs to do is to have an indication that this is a little gingerbread type of. Um, of uh, molding on the uh, on the roof line, and uh, if uh, any refining of this painting would would be done, then then this could be done in in greater detail. But this will tell the story well enough that this is this is a um, this is a little uh, fancy um, well decor on the edge of this uh, on the edge of this great big roof line. I believe it turns the corner here, and as you can see, uh, just the slightest suggestion many times tells the story very eloquently, and you need no need to elaborate on it. The little windows are, of course, just plain white painted um, frames, and they can just be just I indicate them extremely simply. Uh, with uh, with little rectangles here underneath the window, and then on, uh, below are the larger windows that have been boarded up for the winter. In the summertime, these windows have got um, have got pretty plants growing in window boxes and curtains at the windows. But in the winter time, they are boarded up with this white, with the white solid thing with uh, a little pediment roof on the top. And all of this can be done far more uh, uh, carefully and skillfully afterwards. Uh, when you're out there, you would merely indicate these as quickly as you can because it's chilly and you don't uh, fool around with details. You just sort of indicate them very quickly. And then when you have the time later, you rework them. The uh, major paintings of the world have been finished in studios, although they may have been started out of outdoors in, in, on, on the scene. Uh, so there is pretty much uh, what you would expect to see. The, the, the little pediment roof that goes out over the, <clears throat> over the uh, <clears throat> uh, creek there, uh, is, which is being held up with this brace, there's a quite dark red, uh, a little bit of alizarin crimson, a little bit of sienna, and uh, I think we maybe have it. 
it's, it, it starts out here and it just goes on out and um, the, the, uh, this was a, this, the, this hadn't been on this building for a long time. It had been blown away in, in, a, in a hurricane. Uh, Carol was the name of the hurricane that I remember. That's how far back I go. And uh, everything about this little building was really battered to pieces during that particular storm. But um, uh, the, uh, it's been put back there now. Good enough. So here we have uh, the need to the need to work on the on this beach uh, area and also to um, do the foreground. The fo a painting can be made or broken by the foreground. If you mess up the foreground, the chances are that you will have a, a not a very successful painting. This is part of the beach um, that is um, that does not have snow on it. I don't know why. I'm not questioning it. The the water may have come up and pulled the snow away, washed the snow away because tides do come in and out, and um, so there is a part of the beach there that is um, that is free of snow and it's a little bit so, so somewhat tan but it's lovely to work in this very thick and heavy paint because you get such nice effects from it. I'm going to take a very short break now because um, as usual I need to clean these brushes because I'm going to be working in some paler colors so if you're interested to see the end of this don't go too far away I'll be right back. This exciting episode is going to be uh, within the next 10 or 12 minutes and so let's see if we can really zip on through here and conclude uh, the study of this um, lovely color scheme. Uh, I think it's the color scheme that really got me even though I love the building and the location and all that stuff around it. I think that the color scheme of the building is absolutely enchanting. So uh, here I'm walking, working towards the foreground as you know. My hand is absolutely unforgivable but I'm not going to pay any attention to that right now. I shall wash them later. Uh, we have here here, the need to uh, make sure that what I'm going to do as far as the vegetation is concerned is typical. Uh, there is nothing really more irritating than having vegetation which is not typical. I talked about it before with the cedar trees and I'm going to talk about it now with the, um, with the winter vegetation. Now the winter vegetation here turns all sorts of colors uh, but the predominant color are the earth tones naturally. They, uh, they are dark in places and quite pale in others. It all depends upon the sun and it all depends upon the winds, what the wind is doing to the vegetation to make it look like it does. Um, the, um, the need to uh, tell the story about the climate is also important. It can be done not just, with, uh, not just with snow on the ground, but also with what grows at that particular time of year. So um, with, these, uh, with these wonderful um, uh, beach grasses uh, that um, somehow they're called Spartina grass, somehow they manage to survive these great winters and these blistering winds that take place down there at the beach. I mean, anybody who goes and lies on this beach um, 
you know, with much skin to the sun uh, in the summertime, uh, find, it, find it hard to believe that you can be out there at this time of year and have it so devastatingly cold, which is what it was when this scene was shot. However, uh, with the cold also comes a whole different uh, visual uh, attitude about it. And um, it's very easy to live with these paintings. They, they will, uh, it's hanging in one's warm winter house. Uh, having a painting of the, of the winter time is, um, is a lovely feeling. You look at it and there's something wonderful about living here in the climate where you get all these various, um, uh, these different wind uh, weather conditions. I would no more live in a place that doesn't have a change of season than I would f live on Mars. I must know that the snow is out there and then in a very short time the spring is coming and then comes that wonderful warm and lazy summer. So um, even though I'm now living in Virginia for most of the time, that change of climate is equally evident there. Uh, people are so under some strange delusion that Virginia is warmer than here. Far from it. It's uh, just about the same. Uh, we do probably have a longer uh, warm season, but when it's winter time there, it is winter. And let nobody forget it. I'm going to, I'm going to change my, my technique of, um, of the brushes now, and I'm going to reduce some of my... Uh, paint it to uh, a very thin consistency so that I can show you what I mean, that I'm going to be very faithful to this grass. It has, it is very pointed in places, and it needs to be shown as being very sharp. It can't just be, um, be faked, because it is, in fact, they are dark. These, um, oh, need a little bit more liquid here. These are dark tips to this Spartina grass in the winter time, and uh, I will scumble where it goes, but let's be sure that, um, that when you do this, uh, you are faithful to it. Other shows just kind of make grass do what it does. They, it's almost always green, and it almost doesn't have any personality. And so here we are, paying attention to the personality of grass. Uh, I, I, I'm going to scumble it and um, make that grass not make it not as obvious as it is. But I did want to show you how the tops should be uh, pretty faithfully rendered against that snow, um, because they are silhouetted against the snow. Um, the um, uh, the creatures that live uh, in this area are all there, uh, and you wonder how is that possible, but they are. Those, those little um, uh, hermit crabs are somewhere underneath all of this stuff, and um, just, well, they're lying in wait to come and pinch my toes when the season comes. However, um, all of this wonderful color scheme, uh, in a matter of 80 days maybe, is going to be vastly and dramatically changed. Uh, some people think for the better, some people think uh, for interest, but for the most part this will all be dramatically different in a very short period of time. Here is some more of that snow that has managed to, um, the, to drift or be, or be blown uh, up, on, up onto this beach area, and I'm just putting it in extremely thick. The water also comes and plays in here a little bit. Let me get a little bit of, um, of um, uh, the cerulean blue here because the water does come up and play somewhat in this area. As I can see from my monitor, there is a, there is a touch of, uh, of, of blue. It's a little bit in shadow because of the grasses, but it's there. And then more grasses are in front of it. So. As time uh, begins to wear down very, very quickly here, I'm going to produce uh, another bank of uh, the um, of uh, of these grasses, and same same idea, deliberately done, not not accidental. Let's not let's not play too much with accidents because uh, some of some of the programs that do it, they they rely tremendously on on squiggles and uh, and. Um, I don't know, uh, accidental uh, techniques and accidental things happening in the canvas and say, well, now that looks pretty good, doesn't it? I don't want it to look pretty good. I want it to look exactly like what it's supposed to look like. So uh, deliberate strokes, even though they may seem a little bit rough and crude at the same uh, at times when I'm doing it, there is a deliberate feeling of observation here. I want this to be clearly observed by, um, by not just me, because I'm telling a story. I am telling you what is happening on this beach at this time of year, at this time of day. And uh, I believe that that's a responsibility of mine to let you to, ha if you're going to live with this painting, if you're going to live with it, it had better be accurate because there's nothing more irritating than having something on the wall that says, you know, that doesn't really happen that way. That's just, that's just the artist's rendition. Well, I don't call that an artist's rendition. I call that a cop-out. So because uh, let's just do it right. And because uh, a painting is what you live with. 
and uh, by golly, if it's irritating, uh, it ought not to be given house room. Here is another uh, time that I'm going to take this uh, thin brush and I'm going to put a little bit of turpentine and I'm going to once again do the uh, the uh, pointy grasses that are overlapping that um, that drifted snow on the beach. And as you can see from my uh, from the close up here. Uh, and uh, Pete Kohler, our director, is so uh, is so intuitive. He understands immediately when he has to zero in, so that you can be in on this and to understand it. So, this program is, uh, I believe, unique in the fact that uh, the camera people are not just camera people, but they understand what I'm doing. And boy, is that great! Uh, so, anyway, here we have those uh, here we have those wind those uh, grasses. The wind was uh, whipping around, but the grasses are so obstinate that they really don't bend in the wind in the winter time. They kind of what's that thing? That's a glob. They don't really bend to the wind as you would think so. But they um, and there there you have a rather dramatic, wonderful look. And let me put a little bit of lightness to some of that too. It's a little bit too harsh and a little bit too dark. So some of this down here, I think I'm going to put a little bit of ochre in, which is what I see on the monitor, just for the just to relieve it a little bit from being so so unremittingly dark and um, and maybe too hard to see. And the only other thing left then would be after I've gotten my yellow ochre looking uh, grasses here is to give you the foreground which is when the water comes in and really uh, begins to lap at the um, at the feet of this uh, spit of land out there at the um, at the end of trustees road it's a um, it's a wonderful wild place to go and it's also extremely painterly. Uh, it just sort of calls to you. Uh, there is a certain nice darkness here that's taking place in the um, at the bottom of all this growing thing. This is where all those hermit crabs are are lurking and uh, resting and hibernating and um, doing whatever they do when it gets bloody cold out there. And here is the here is the uh, final part. And uh, the, the the clock seems to run away uh, with uh, me and. And my projects, because um, I always realize uh, it's incredible how quickly the time has gone. All right, a little bit of ultramarine blue in this great puddle here. The water in the foreground is quite is brilliant. Uh, why the water in the distance is not so brilliant, but it isn't. And I think that just to just to show you how another band of color is going to give a whole different dimension. All of a sudden, you are now. Distantly, you are removed from that little uh, pretty house on the thing because a whole body of water is between you and it. Uh, so this is also another thing that is that is intriguing about doing paintings and picking spots and being faithful to what you see is that you can create moods and atmospheres which I defy the camera to do. And now I've now become separated from the gamecock. I am now on the other side of the water. It is now a little isolated <coughs> wonderful motif there off in the distance. <coughs> And even though it's extremely um, detailed, I mean, in color and size and shape and so on, it's still rough enough and impressionistic enough for it to be an individual piece. I'm going to put a few dark places to show you that there is uh, surface uh, activity. The surface activity takes place because the wind is whipping along, and it's um, this. This should be refined a little bit later, but um, the indication of it should be there that um, the the surface of the water, and no matter what the time of year is, does become agitated. And the little waves. Uh, these are not stripes in the water. These are little shadows of the waves that are blowing. Well, um, as as usual, uh, the um, the need to. Uh, Come to an end. It's here. I would like to probably scumble these. I've got a great big crazy looking brush here. This looks like a man's shaving brush, but it does things. It removes. Uh, it removes um, a, a harsh and overdone um, uh, uh, areas of paint. Uh, and, and this is called uh, in my in my book. I say this is unpainting. It softens everything. All right. This is it. I've just gotten the sign that it's over. We have come to the end of a painting of a winter beach scene. Uh, as I sign off, I'm just going to be signing it, and you can sort of zero in on my signature. Don't forget, sign your name, sign your work, no matter what you do, just sign it. Don't be one of these anonymous American painters that was never confident enough to put their names on the camp. Sign it, whether you think it's good or bad. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope that you have your interest aroused to go out and paint the winter time, because before you know it, it's not going to be here anymore. Thanks again. Bye-bye. Pat Windrow, signing off.